Are we live? Live at five from the School of Knock. This is Little Dud. Hello. Remember when he was like this size right here? He used to be this big shooting alligators. Now he's this big shooting X's. So, people joining in? Uh, this, yeah. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we actually have a family Thanksgiving live feed right now. Shazzy Fresh is behind camera. My dad is back here. Come on in, Dad. You might as well come say hi. It was Veterans Day not too long ago, so here's, here's three generations. Hi, right guys. Here. Army Ranger right here. And uh, X. Yeah, X. <laughs> He's, uh, he's happily retired, and actually he was happily packing, well, I don't know, were you happily packing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Friday blowout was ridiculous, my dad helped out a lot for that, so I thought it was a perfect weekend to start with all of you who got out and purchased one of the silverbacks. I'm going to work with you on a few simple things to get started with that. So I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Um, first is, for those of you who are watching and don't have the silverback, when are more silverbacks coming? Hey, there's people that want to knock to it. The knock to it's are being made right now. We hope we'll be able to have a big batch of knock to it's available to ship before Christmas and then immediately following that will be silverbacks. Um, I wish Carter could keep up with all of you, but right now we can't. Um, the other thing, before we get started today, and I don't want to sound like a sales pitch, but everyone, I answered a lot of emails this morning, a lot of messages, a lot of people were asking about knock to its I know today's segment is about silverbacks, but for knock to its we had a batch come in, and I don't know if you can see this. Can you see it? We had a batch come in, where the logo is slightly off center, barely off center, and uh, we didn't feel right about putting them out there and charging full price. So, Shazzy Fresh just put these on the website. They're at the knockonarchery.com website right now, and there's only 30. 30 of these available. We knocked 10 bucks off the price, so if you've been waiting on a knock to it, if you don't mind that logo being an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch off center, then go to the Black Friday blowout tab and there's a release and we called it... I forgot already now. <laughs> I wanted to call You'll it. see it. It's at the bottom of the page. Oh, the mishap. It's called the mishap. The mishap knocked yep, to it. Yep, the mishap knocked to it. So if you're watching, we don't want to lose all of you in the live feed, but there are 30, and when they're gone, they're gone, and they're 10 bucks off. So we put them there because they're at a discount. So with that said, we're going to get to what it takes to properly shoot a tension-activated release. And Little Dud has been shooting a tension-activated release since he was shooting alligators at age nine and a half, ten? Oh, eleven. <laughs> eleven. So this is what he's always shot. This is what Sharon has always shot. Several of my students, even people on national teams, only shoot the tension activated releases. And I'm just here to tell you that this is the release that puts you in a position to be able to make properly executed shots all the time. And if you're worried about not performing a perfectly executed shot when the moment of truth is presenting itself, then it's really important for you to realize that that release is actually pointing out something very specific in how your mind's working. Your mind is uncomfortable with the situation, which Dr. Dudley over here, the psychologist, many of you don't know, my dad's a psychologist, so um, I had training in Jedi voodoo for <laughs> most of my adolescence. But um, what's happening is anxiety is starting to set in, and that's a big part of target panic is 
dealing with anxiety, which by definition, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is a sudden um, uneasement of the mind. Am I correct? Close enough clinically. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you have target panic and if you're to the point where you really start to have anxiousness when your pin is approaching the center of that gold or or when your thumb starts to get towards a trigger or when your index finger starts to get towards a trigger then obviously it's immediately identifying a very very important flaw in your shooting and for a lot of people they're able to get through that moment when there is nothing at stake and when there's no, almost when you're shooting in an un, uh, a subconscious state where you're just performing on a routine, no different than right now I'm on a live feed, but yet my body's still subconsciously able to breathe, right? Because I'm not having to consciously think about that. That's how our mind works. So what happens is once your mind triggers this anxiety or this fear of the center of the gold or a fear of your pin not being in the center, then you end up anticipating the shot or rushing that shot. A very common term right now, which I don't really agree with is, um, what's it called? A controlled punch. A controlled punch is just a very marketable way of saying you have anticipation to the target. So this release was really designed to allow you to draw back with a safety, let off of the safety, and then focus on the movement involved with pulling against the back wall into the, until the release fires. And what you're focusing on is not having the anticipation of when that release will fire. Now this release is also going to identify some of your flaws in your form, which today maybe little Dud will have, maybe he won't. But when he does, we're going to identify that. The other thing too is this running star slash swimming star is he's pretty lean and he's pretty shredded in his back so we're going to take advantage of that and i'm actually going to show you some of the muscles that are actually working when it comes to activating this release so before i get involved are there any specific questions any of you want to chime in with now um, on things that maybe i need to address coming up or also things that maybe I should address before we get started. Anything <laughs> pertinent? Nothing at the moment. All right. So we're in class. Everyone's everyone's in eating turkey, turkey leftovers. You've got some tryptophan going on. You're thinking about falling asleep. I feel you. So let's come over here. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to have you right here, little dud. Why don't you come right here, babe, so we can talk about this. So the first thing is we've got through the part of actually setting this release up. And I'll be right back. Let me grab this quick. So we've got a digital scale. If you can get one, this is an old Easton scale. I don't think they make them anymore. Lancaster Archery also has a scale, the X-Spot scale. Um, there's different ones in the in the rifle hunting type thing where you can actually have a scale where when you pull on it it tells you what your pulling weight is correct so with the silverback release what you do is you have a small little loop you have your release and if you have a digital scale you can see how hard you pull against that scale until it fires okay and when you have that weight, that's pretty much set up for what the bow is that you're shooting. This one right here is actually set up for my hunting bow, which has a higher let off. So it actually fires at a lower poundage than the, 
than the silverback that I have set up for my target bow because my target bow has 65% let off cam, so I'm actually holding a little bit more weight. Once you do that, the next thing that we're really gonna look for is proper posture, proper form, okay? And with that, it's gonna be super critical with this release because the way this release works and the way this release activates is from pulling until you reach a certain poundage, which you've set your release to, over the holding weight until it properly fires. Okay, this is gonna be in critical. So if your draw length is incorrect, then what happens is your bone structure will start to be incorrect. And the more your bone structure starts to change or your posture starts to change, the harder it is to pull through your release. Now this is really identifiable when we look at recurve archers especially high level recurve archers. If you look at Olympic style recurve archers, like for example, Brady Ellison, Brady, congrats on your 598, unbelievable. That actually beats my best ever indoor score by one point, amazing. Um, you look at people like Brady, they rely on their posture to properly pull through that clicker until they hear the click and then they're letting go of that string relaxing that, that hand. Ideally, the evolution or the silverback, depending on which one you have, is gonna be the exact same. What I really like about the silverback, and the reason why I had the silverback made, is one, to go along with the knock to it, which I shoot, because I really like to, I like to hunt with my knock to it a lot, and I also like to shoot indoor rounds with my knock to it, but there's also times where I'm just out in the yard and I'm really focusing on technique and training and execution and nothing brings that out in an archer better than this release, I promise you. So we're gonna talk about, go ahead and draw back H. Um, don't worry about shooting right now, I'm gonna talk about a few things. So come around a little bit more, Shazzy. So we looked at Harry when he draws back aim up a little higher for now just so I can work on posture. If you look here, we've got Harry's shoulders directly under his hips, his hips are directly under his feet, but you notice a perfect T formation, okay? This arm here is fairly parallel with the front arm, the front arm, arrow shaft, all that's parallel. Go ahead and let down and rest. Now this is going to be super, super critical when it comes to execution because if this front portion of his body changes, which a lot of us do, me included, I've been, as much as I know what the correct posture is, there's certainly times during competition where anxiety or an uneasiness of the mind sets in for whatever reason that is, whether it's, you know, you've triggered a fight or flight um, response because you're nervous because of a situation or a performance. And what happens is a lot of time, a lot of times anxiety is very, very similar to stress and stress causes constriction. Okay. So, even though he may be in this posture now, if he started to worry about outcome or maybe the size of a rack, if he took his focus from proper technique and then focused towards the outcome, a lot of times stress will soon be related to that response. And when that happens, constriction will happen. And what happens with a lot of people, and myself included, you start to compress. And as you compress, it gets much more difficult to properly pull through a release until it fires. Now when you're in perfect posture like this, where he's standing proud, standing tall, he has full expansion in the chest, raises the bow to the target, draws the release hand back to the face, in this position, he's standing proud, he's shooting proud which is what I want all my students to do. I always want my students to be proud of what they're doing, proud of what they're shooting. If they start to have anxiety or some type of mental fear about what's happening, then a lot of times they start to shoot compressed. They start to shoot small. 
you can make yourself smaller and smaller. This is something that I really learned the most when I started shooting a recurve bow and utilizing a clicker because I realized even though I felt like I was standing tall, when I was pulling against that clicker and it wasn't firing, I'd look up and I could see that I had several inches of my arrow shaft still from the clicker, which was immediately letting me know how much I was compressing. So from there, if your posture is correct, let's go ahead and draw back one more time. I want to talk about bow fit. And for those of you who are going to ask about the rest, the knock-on rests are coming. Even he doesn't have one yet. I literally got one in yesterday and I gave it to Joe Rogan. So when we look at his posture, the next thing is you're going to have to make sure your bow is fit properly. Okay, so we look at his bow fit. He has his anchor between his ear and the corner of his mouth or between his ear and his eyes where his anchor sits. Index finger under the jaw, middle finger above the jaw. The bow is fit to where the string is right at or right past the corner of your mouth, depending on your axle axle length and your string angle. And then you can see that the string is right at the tip of his nose and his head is still vertical. Want to let down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and this is, you know, these are the small things when you're starting to learn with this release. You need to realize that these muscle groups and he's been swimming and running, although there's certain types of year he shoots a lot. The thing with archery is if you're not continually being repetitive in your practice, then the smaller muscle groups are always the ones that start to fatigue the fastest. I'm the same way. I've been hunting for three months. Right now, I just got back into the gym, just got back into slinging some kettlebells, and I can tell you that some of the smallest little tendons in my elbow they're screaming right now same with my shoulder but once i get back into that routine those things are going to be the first to strengthen up as well and this is the same thing the, the silverback is going to identify very small muscle groups that we need to have as archers but that you also have to focus on with perfect form and technique so you can see the string was at the slightly past the corner of his mouth, mainly because with his size and the size of Bowie shoots, the string at that angle has to come slightly past the corner of his mouth, but his head is still vertical, strings at the tip of his nose. Now, if all that's in perfect posture, then from there, really what we're gonna focus on is taking your silver back, depressing the release, or the trigger, and when you hold that trigger down, this is not gonna fire, okay? Now, if you've already fired the release, is yours fired? No? Um, let me grab it. String. Here it is, okay. So, if we've already fired the release, if, you put, if you're pushing your safety, you can't cock it. So you need to make sure you're not pushing your safety to properly cock that. You also want to make sure that when it's fired, you know, this release, this uh, hook should be, should be able to move freely in between firing and cocking, okay? You push it closed to cock it. Right there, it's cocked. It's ready to depress the safety and draw your bow back, okay? If that's not happening, then definitely all you have to do, if you ever have a product problem with any of our releases, all you have to do is notify Carter, talk to Forrest, and let him know because we're definitely standing behind anything that isn't working perfectly. So once you've done that, you're gonna depress your safety. For those of you who have never shot one of these, raise, you gotta get in the habit of raising that bow arm to the target. Point your pin at the target and then draw the release hand back to your face. It's really critical that you start to learn to point that bow at the target before you draw. Because ideally, once you anchor, you adjust your head, you're looking through your peep sight, as soon as you come into your peep sight, you almost want your pin 
very close to the dot that you're aiming at. You don't want to be way over here. You don't want to be way up here. A lot of people say, well, do you come at the target from the bottom or from the side or from the top? I try to go at the target from the dead center. I literally try to point my pin at the target, and as soon as I come into my peep sight, I want my pin sitting somewhere close to the middle of that target. If I'm at a Vegas uh, target or a Vegas tournament, and there's four different Vegas faces on one target, each one of them have three spots. When I raise my bow, draw back, anchor, come into my peep, I want to be on the spot that I need to shoot. It's an important technique because one, you're going to have less anxiety wondering if you're in the right spot, and you're also going to waste a lot less energy trying to get to that spot. And I, I personally believe the further you are from the center and having to get to that center, the more likely, likely you are to freeze off that target. So with that said, first thing that we're going to do, and the first thing I want all of you to do is you're going to start with a blank target start up close don't be afraid to shoot at three yards five yards ten yards anything but we're going to start with a blank target and we're going to just focus on raising the bow towards the center of the target drawing back anchoring coming into our peep sight Letting off the safety, I let off the safety and I personally bring my thumb around to my index finger and then I focus on pulling that index finger along the base of my jaw. Focus on pulling that tip of that elbow to something behind you until it fires and you come through. The, what I like about the silverback is because it's two fingers and you have the circle around your index finger, Mentally, you can really focus on almost pulling through like this, okay? You don't want to get in the habit of trying to rock the release in order to fire. You want to pull through the release to get it to fire. So let's go ahead and watch Little Dud do one here. Um, yellow Bale. Don't worry about aiming. I was going to take his sight off, but I didn't, so... Points the arrow to the target, draws back. You can see he's got his finger on the trigger. Posture's good, front shoulder is down. Go ahead and let off your safety. Brings it around. Now he's gonna slowly continue to pull. Boom, perfect shot. When you experience a shot where a lot of you who have never done this before, you're gonna have this feeling for the first time that, wow, that felt totally different. And that's something that you're actually gonna wanna take some time and try to imprint into your mind. What I really like to try to do with many of my archers is have them focus on learning that exact sensation of a perfect shot. You wanna focus on having that pulling motion until that shot suddenly breaks and you almost, instead of collapsing, it's almost like a trapdoor feel where all of a sudden the floor just comes out and you're free falling. That's really what you want to happen with that release hand. Now let's go ahead, make another shot here. Arms getting sore, babe. <laughs> it's because you're so tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got backup. <laughs> Olivia can come in. So once again, <laughs> here we go. Raising up, drawing the release hand back. You can see this elbow comes up, and that's actually allowing him to engage certain muscles in his back. He's going to let off the safety, and now he's going to start to continually pull the elbow. Perfect. That right there are perfect shots. Perfect shots. And if you're someone who's never shot this before, I can see it in people's face when they experience that for the very first time. And it's a very, very important moment. If you listen to the podcast, I've talked many times about when I had my first unanticipated shot execute. And at the time, it was with um, a hinge style release that Randy Ulmer gave me. 
And still to this day, I can very, very vividly describe exactly how that first shot felt. My first perfectly executed surprise shot. Once you make that and you have that feeling, just I would urge you to take your time to think about everything involving that shot because this will be important later on in your career. If there's ever a point where you're in a situation where maybe you're nervous and you really need to get your game back on track, to be, the more of those senses that you can remember or that you really focus on remembering right now during this first time that you do it, then the more likely you are to be able to recall that later on and refer back to it, which I think is critical for any student. So I'm gonna go down and grab these arrows. H, we're gonna need you to get muscular. We're gonna have to... Do you wanna answer some questions? Yeah, why don't we do some questions quick while, while little Dud gets ready for this. Okay, how to set the poundage on the release. Okay, so to properly set the poundage on the silverback, what you're gonna do is, and I have a video on this. If you, I don't know what the name of the video is, um, depending on who's watching right now. Um, man, Brad Iverson, Tim Collins, Randy DeVries, Ryan Bronco, any of you guys watching, you're always helpful. Let me know what the name of that video is where I first showed the knock to it in the silverback. But more or less what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a bow scale and you're gonna draw back your bow, okay? And it's gonna tell you what your holding weight is. So my bow right now, um, 71 pounds, my holding weight's 14. From there, I'm gonna then take this release and a little piece of material like this, and I'm gonna pull on this release until it fires, and I'm gonna again see what that weight is. Now for most people, I like them to start around five pounds over what their holding weight is. So this bottom number, 14 pounds, I would set this release to where it would fire or open up at about 19 pounds, and that makes you really work for the shot. If we're starting out right now, I want you to work for that shot, and then eventually we're gonna move towards that shot being able to execute better at about four pounds of holding weight. But with the silverback, there's a lot of steps that we need to make, and what everyone out there needs to realize is psychology tells us that it takes about 21 days to create or to form a habit. So this isn't something that you're gonna learn by tomorrow or by next weekend. This is something that I want you to work on from now until next weekend, and then I'm gonna give you the next step. So we're gonna work on these little things. So you wanna set your release properly. We're gonna start on a blank bale, and I want you to focus on raising the bow arm to the target, pointing it at the target, drawing the release hand to the face, anchoring, tip of the nose on the string, letting off the safety, and continuing to pull until that release properly executes. What you're gonna find is there's gonna be times where it feels like it goes off really easy. There's gonna be times where it feels like it won't go off, and it's not because there's something wrong with the release. It's simply something that's varying in your form and this is something that's really important to, ident to identify and something that hopefully I'm gonna be able to help you with even though I'm not in your shop helping you directly. Any other quick questions? Will it be more difficult to use the release with improper draw length? For sure. So if your draw length is not correct, it's gonna be much more difficult. Like for example, if I took Harry's bow and I tried to shoot it, I'm gonna to have to compress my front shoulder to get in there. So it's much harder for me to pull through his release in this posture than being able to pull through my release in my posture. So it's, if your draw length is incorrect or if your posture is incorrect, it's certainly gonna make it more difficult. And this is one reason why it's such a good tool because even if you're set up right now to be perfect in posture, perfect in draw length, 
if you start to change over the course of a tournament or as you start to get tired, you start to lean back. As soon as you hitch, front shoulder comes. As soon as that happens, elbow comes down. Your ability, your leverage is now going down, not through. So everything starts to change and you start to have to pull harder and harder and harder to get that to fire. And what I've noticed, and what I notice with students is, you know, when they draw back, normally your arrow is sitting at a certain part of your riser, okay, at full draw. What I've noticed is archers that are shooting a, a silverback or an evolution, they'll say, it's just not going off. I'm pulling as hard as I can and it's not going off. But in all fairness, I can watch the arrow and see that they're actually creeping forward because they're collapsing. And even though they think they're pulling all the way through that wall, the arrow is just continually creeping and creeping and creeping forward, which is perfect evidence that they're actually not pulling through the shot. All right, so little Doug, bring your <laughs> swimming body in here. <laughs> right here, let's go right here. Chazzy, come on around. Okay, we're gonna pull back a few times and I do not want you to shoot right now. So, you can see when Harry pulls back, Front scapula is down and forward. This is not compressed back. He, he continues to, dr to grow as well. So his bow is actually a fuzz short form right now. This front arm has a little bit of bend in it, which I might take this camera. Let me take this camera. So because he has a slight bend in this elbow, you can see it puts stress on the tricep. Go ahead and relax, H. When you start to get this swoop, there immediately becomes pressure on the elbow. Ideally, what we want is to rely on bone structure, not muscular structure. So let's go ahead and draw back again. Perfect, good. You can see that this arm's up. There's some tension in this delt, but the main tension is right here, everybody. This is what we call the rhomboid, okay? This rhomboid is a major part of this pulling motion. If he wasn't engaged here, then what he'd end up relying on is all bicep, which this bicep is not fully engaged. The delt is not fully engaged other than the center for lifting that arm. I'm going to have you continue to hold. Now watch this. Just hold your bow, H. This is what happens with people when they're at full draw too long. Look at the muscles starting to fatigue. See this all starting to fatigue? Keep holding, H. Don't let down. See it twitching? See this front shoulder creeping, everyone? This is what happens with student. Look at the more pressure on the try. Look at this. Look at that. See that firing? Keep holding, dude. Big bucks coming in. Just wait. Look, look at this. See, everyone, this is what happens. Look at the lat. Look at the lat now engaging. He's holding longer. Okay, let down. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It burns. <laughs> it's such a burn. We haven't even shot an arrow yet. So, yeah. Here, I'll hand it back over. Okay, so take a, just rest for a minute. We'll let you rest. This is really important because these are the things that a lot of people have a difficult time understanding when you're trying to do this yourself breakdowns happen more often and if you can hear that rain I apologize but um, it's raining cats and dogs outside so that's just how it is but what I really want you to 
to key in on is thinking about breakdown, thinking about posture change, thinking about if you're shooting in perfect posture and then you're holding too long, you're pulling, you feel like you're pulling but nothing's going on. If you feel like you're pulling and nothing's happening, instead of thinking that the release is not going off, I want you to think about what I just showed you. Is there breakdown here? Is there breakdown here? Is there breakdown here? Is there breakdown here? This has to be tall, proud. Posture has to be perfect. Let me grab my bow, you can rest another minute each. So, whoa. All right, get this silver back. We're gonna be tall, we're gonna be proud. Feet are under us, okay? Raise the bow to the target. Draw the release hand to the face. Anchor, peep, let off the safety. Pull, 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 pull. Perfect shot. And do that again. Cocked, locked, and loaded. So feet grip, raise to the target, draw the release hand, the bow stopped, we're in the valley, anchor, tip of the nose to the string, let off the safety, aiming. Pull, 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 pull. Fire. That's all we need to focus on. If you would like, if you're comfortable, take your sight off. If you feel like you need to have your sight on, get the biggest bullseye you could possibly get. Don't try to aim small. I want you to focus on just pulling through the shot. That's really the first step. This is a perfect time of year to focus on execution and not score. I don't think a lot of you watching are at the World Cup right now, so you need to focus on training technique. This is the best time of year to do it, 100%. So you rested? Yeah. All right, let's switch spots, and we're gonna go, we're gonna let LD do another one. By the way, uh, I've got, I'm gonna do a podcast with my buddy from the On It Academy, Sam. We're gonna do a super podcast next week about proper nutrition and also proper training in relation to archery. It's gonna be really cool. He's a expert in mobility and movement. And then um, also tomorrow morning, I'll be posting the podcast that we did later on, or that we did earlier today, um, which you don't know about yet, but yeah, we're gonna post that tomorrow, and I'll probably answer, well, I guess I'm gonna have to do another one, answer any of the questions that you guys had during this live stream that I wasn't able to get to because I'm coaching, I'm not listening tonight. You guys should be listening. So, and again, I guess before I, before I make him sweat it out another time. Thanks everyone so much for the support. Um, this weekend between my dad and I, um, we had to help Shazzy get all of your orders out. And it was just amazing to me to be able to see the support that you guys give. And it was super, super humbling. Um, I can't thank you enough, no doubt about it. So. All right, H, nothing but the best from you, son. <laughs> nothing but the best. I think that's the first time I've yelled at him ever. <laughs> okay, front shoulders down, posture straight. S slight movement in his spine, not bad, good. See, much more relaxed in the front hand. You are letting off your, you can go for your shot if you want. Let's off the safety. Right here's the pull. There we go. Stay there. This time do it at your own pace, H. Shoot. Yeah, just go through your whole routine. So let's back up a little bit, start from, start from the beginning. Whole routine, this has been ingrained in him since he was nine years old. Looks down at his feet, which he already just did anyway, but so now he's 
pretty much focused on his grip. He's acquiring the target, focusing on the target. Go ahead. Puts his pin on the target, draws back, stays in posture, centers his peep, centers his pin, lets off his safety, pulls through the shot. Shots for me and We'll see for him, but go ahead and start from the very beginning. My shots take anywhere from 12 to 14 seconds for execution. Um, that's just part of my system. So he pretty much looked down, checked his feet. Go ahead. Twelve one thousand right there. That's how it is. The only thing I would, if I was working with H right now, I would say front hand shows some tension. Um, go ahead and go through your shot. See tension here. Relax from here forward. Relax this front hand more, please. Good. That's relaxed. You don't see, see how much more relaxed it made this. Now he's ready to go through. Here is the pulling motion right here. This is the group. Perfect. Good job, dude. Go ahead and dress up. So, thank you all so much. Um, does anyone need me to make one or two more shots to show you anything specifically before I sign out? And by the way, um, Greg Poole, next time you trump me on a live feed on a Friday night, you're going to get arm wrestling. Actually, I don't want to arm wrestle you. I know you could beat me. But anyway... Thanks everyone for tuning in. Any major questions, babe? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> so many. <laughs> so, well, yes, hey, come on in, Dad. I'm gonna bring my old man in here, right here. So my dad, actually, he took me to my first archery range, didn't you? Fox Valley Archers. Sure did. Yep, Fox Valley Archers, and he bought me my first bow. I think you had a wooden limbed golden eagle. Exactly. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah. And then I got a, I don't even know what I got. I think my very first bow that I ever got that was new was a PSE Fireflight or something. Uh, off the market. <laughs> <laughs> don't know, but all I know is I got into a lot of trouble with my bow and I'm trying to make up for it now by helping all of you. So thanks everybody for tuning in to a live feed. I would jump on my dad's back, but the last time I did that in a golf tournament. I didn't shoot par golf. <laughs> he didn't shoot par golf. I wasn't so. expecting it either. <laughs> so thanks everybody, appreciate it. And uh, thanks so much for the support. And if the knock on, knock to it, what do we call them? Mishaps. The mishaps aren't gone, they will be for sure. Thanks everybody. We're going to La Casa. We're going to have a margarita for our last part of our family weekend. So, see you, everybody. Keep shooting.